Oh, the Nephilim theory. <laughs> um, okay, uh, first I'll start off by saying that as much as it is possible for me, I apply reason and logic to anything that I investigate. I, I think it's, you know, I was uh, raised in a secular household. I wasn't brought up in religion. I've never really been involved in religion other than for uh, a short period of time where I decided very quickly that what I saw was hypocritical. And, uh, you know, uh, that, that was many, many years ago when I was a young man. So um, this has just been my own personal uh, investigative journey about the nature of reality as far as, you know, my particular path in my life. Um, of course, I've read the Bible, you know, in, in my, when I was 20, 21, um, and I read all the religious books that I could get my head on, you know, and um, it, it didn't take long for me to see the internal contradictions within any particular book and then go kind of like WTF to what they had to say compared to you know to each other so you know <laughs> somebody you know on a, just on a basic level somebody appears to be the author of confusion um, I, I think this is indisputable um, okay so that's the preface um, look at I've had my own spiritual experiences in my life right I, I'm a theist I don't hold any definitive version of theism, um, uh, absolutely. Uh, in some ways you could maybe classify me as agnostic theist, um, because I, I just don't know what God is, although I don't believe in the frisky dirt, uh, you know, talking monkey hypothesis, and I, you know, I'm being facetious there, but um, if any, you know, materialist is, is honest, that's basically what it's saying, you know. And, and I, I'm not against dressing that up in some nice poetry, I think that's important too. But at its root, there's a certain meaninglessness and, and um, nihilism uh, about all of it, if that's the truth. I mean, and yes, I, I drank my cup of existential bitterness in my life, believe me, you know. Um, so, I, I've sort of pondered on this for most of my life. Uh, it's premised, my ideas are, are sort of broken into two streams, that, that these beings that I've experienced are, um, well, I'd have to say first, they're, that they're ontologically real. They're not phantoms of my imagination, as a Buddhist might say. Um, However, we'll, we'll just continue with that. And I, I think I'm allowed my interpretation, even if it's wrong. Um, and that we'll go, we'll break it down into two, that these beings are, are either uh, benevolent or malevolent. So let's start with the malevolent, their theory first, that they're malevolent. Well, if they're malevolent, then that explains why all the books are contradictory. You know, that explains why, you know, uh, someone would go to Mary and then turn up uh, 700 years later to Gabriel and totally contradict himself. You know, it explains, uh, you know, uh, Mormonism. Oh, it's just the, the Arantia book. On and on and on and on. I could go on and on and on about, you know, uh, uh, extraterrestrial beings, angelic beings, imparting, you know, this knowledge to human beings. It's all contradictory, you know. Um, <clears throat> So, and then, you know, the other part of this is when I hear Christians especially go, oh, yes, yes, up there. I mean, they're cheering leading for the Nephilim theory, right? And, and oh, my God, but they haven't fooled me. And, and what, what, what cracks me up about them is, is the power they give to the Nephilim. Oh, these, they're, but they didn't fool me. They didn't fool my 85 AQ, IQ. Um, yeah, okay, so... Um, let's just go with they've been fooled too. That, that if this theory were true, and I'm not saying it is, but if it were, um, uh, 
then let's let's be honest and say they fooled everybody. Okay, it's not hard to fool a talking monkey if you're you know some kind of you know uh, you know a celestial being, right? You know we're we're just we're nothing to them. Okay, so. Um, I won't get into why they're doing it or, or anything like that, but just the possibility that they're, they are real and that they are, in this scenario, malevolent. And that explains an awful lot about what's going on on this planet, if that were true. Now, let's take the view that they're benevolent, right? And that all the chaos and all the contradictions is strictly due to our... Uh, human condition in our evolutionary situation, right? So we were archaic at one point and, and you know, we went through magical and mythical and we're at rational, the modern worldview. And all these worldviews have their own built-in chaos and contradictions. And it's just a part of who we are. And it's just, it's a bloody nightmare to be on this planet because of the, you know, just this human situation um, that we find ourselves in. Um, so that, that explains the contradictions, you know, it's just human, just human, right? But what if, you know, science isn't completely correct in their theorizing about, uh, that we're the only people in the universe, not that really, does science really say that? Okay, so maybe there's other dimensions, does science disprove other dimensions and beings that live on? No! Hell no, it doesn't disprove that. It's impossible to disprove that. So let's just, for the sake of this saying, that these interdimensional beings are involved with the situation on this planet, and they're actually benevolent. And it's not them that's causing the trouble. It's the human condition that's causing the trouble. And they're, they're trying to, you know, help us... Uh, manage this macro evolutionary situation here now I, I don't know I, I have no idea which one of these two could be right or whether either one of them are right and you know the the uh, frisky dirt talking monkey um, cosmology is the truth you know I'm not attached to any one of these I'm okay with whatever this is it doesn't bother me you know I'm only really concerned about truth you know and uh, if people can be honest about what's true, and that I think we have you know, reasonable grounds for a discussion. Um, so anyway, I don't want to go on too much about this. I think I've made the basic points that I made. Oh yeah, I just wanted to, to say there's three possibilities under the benevolent um, one. One, um, under Buddhism, there's the rainbow body uh, uh, hypothesis, which is completely uh, evolutionary um, situation where human beings somehow um, stumbled into being able to turn their bodies into light, and that these, you know, Nephilim are us. You know, they're 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 what would be called in the lore of the New Age movement ascended masters. Okay, that's one one um, thing. The second one would be that there is this unknown God. But, and this starts to get into Gnostic theory that, that you know, there's human beings as far as God and humans, it's, 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 there's just no connection there as far as it's, it's you know, it's meaningful for a human. But there are intermediate uh, manifestations uh, and these would be called, you know, archons and maybe there's good archons and bad archons. Um, but for this thing, we'll say they're good archons and they're trying to help uh, humanity through their human condition. And then the third one is the um, the ET, the, the um, that they're you know that these the Palladians or whoever they're they're helping uh, the human condition, the evolutionary situation here. So anyway, AndrewMarkMusic.com on the Nephilim theories. Um, peace out. <clears throat> or as TJ says, peace the fuck out. <laughs>